Hello, York College community. Normally on a weekday at 10 a.m., the Campbell Center is full of people. But as you might guess, today it's quite empty. Chapel is a very important part of the York College experience. Every single weekday, our campus shuts down at 10 a.m. and everyone joins together in this building. It's not so much important because of what the programming is, but it's more important because we emphasize community at York College. And right now, you might be missing some of that York College community. One of the things that we wanna do is address that. We wanna address it every day at 10 a.m. We wanna share a little bit of a YC Chapel moment. These might be live, they might be recorded, but there are opportunities for you to hear from some of the York College community. So I wanna invite you, beginning tomorrow, when classes reopen, albeit online, but classes start back up, we wanna provide at 10 a.m. on all of our social media presence, a chapel moment, a time when someone from here shares with you. So join us tomorrow, tomorrow when the, our very own President Steve Ekman brings us a short message. And I'll see you either on Instagram, on Facebook, or on Twitter. This is Prez Ek speaking to you from the basement of the Levitt Academic Resource Center. It's pretty empty down here. Uh, it's, it's beautiful and it's new and I wish there were a bunch of students here. You know, every generation is defined by events that happen during their lifetime. I know my generation was defined by the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The uh, next generation was defined by the uh, explosion of the space shuttle. And of course, the generation after that, just previous to your generation, was uh, defined by 9-11. This is an event that's going to define your generation. It's going to define uh, your future. It's going to define your present. We hope that as you struggle with us through this event and through the things that happen around it, that you will remember that the most important thing in your life is your relationship with God. And your future uh, decision making is going to be based on things that uh, have, have happened to you here at your college and things that you've learned. We're disappointed about this semester and the fact that we aren't going to be able to finish it with everyone on campus. None of us, when we left for spring break, assumed that we wouldn't see each other again. That is one of the sad things that happens because I, like a lot of seniors, am in my last semester here. And so not being able to see you during this time, not being in, able to interact with you, is definitely something that weighs heavily on my heart as well as all of us on campus. We are dedicated and committed to make the best of this situation, to keep God involved. We have you in our daily prayers. We hope that everything that is happening through online education and that is happening in your life through uh, events at home uh, are helping you to grow stronger and helping you to be better servants of God. Anything we can do to help that situation, we want to certainly be a part of. We want you to contact us. We want you to keep in contact. We want you to check your emails. We want you to think seriously about uh, your future. And we want you to come back in the fall. Fall is going to be a homecoming here. Not just a homecoming for alumni coming back, but a homecoming for students who will not have seen each other in quite a while. It's going to be an exciting time, and we need you here to help us to structure the tapestry that is going to be York College in the future. We love you, we miss you, we want you back, and we want you to continue to pray for your college as we pray for you. God bless you all. This spring, we decided that we wanted to take a group of students to do a spring mission trip to work with Dry Bones. We offered this mission trip, actually it's called a vision trip, where students learn about um, houseless young adults, but also learn about what it's like to live in poverty, to live without homes, to not know where your next meal is coming through, and then to help people feel that they're worthy and are loved. So we're going to hear from some of the students and what they learned from this mission and um, how it will impact their lives as students and as future professionals. So day one, walking into the Dry Bones mission, we met Mark and he told us that this was not gonna be your normal mission trip, it was gonna be a vision trip. And he was gonna open our eyes to new things on the streets of Denver that we never thought we would see. Something that I learned right away when I started talking to the homeless was that 
everything that I've ever learned about homeless people was wrong. I would be talking to someone and they'd, they'd ask about my life and they'd ask about what's important to me. And that really just struck me as this is not what I expected at all. I thought that like everybody was just gonna be kind of different in the way that I wouldn't be able to talk to them, but they were very, very kind. The way they so while we were on this mission trip, Dry Bones, they took us to a couple different businesses that help homeless people. Um, we went to two different um, cafes, um, Graceful Community Cafe and Cafe 180. And at both of these places, you could either pay the full price for the meal, or you could pay what you could, or you could do volunteer hours to cover your meal. And um, that was really cool to see that they were helping out with what they could with their business. And we also went to Purple Door um, Coffee Roaster, which is where they will give homeless people internships, which was really cool to see that um, they get the job, but they also get to learn um, different skills from that. We were also asked to look for humanity. On the staircases, there was some beautiful art. Everywhere you looked, there were signs of humanity and love. My biggest takeaway from this trip was the interacting part. Like, it was fun interacting with the homeless people because like, even though they were homeless, they still had a story to tell. And it was like neat to like listen to the story they had to share with us. On the Thursday of the trip, we got an email learning that we weren't going to be returning for classes for a while. And while to me that was just absolutely devastating, we still had to function that day because while we uh, had heard that news, we were still at the Dry Bones mission and we were supposed to still be interacting um, with the homeless people there. And so I really got to thinking, you know, why am I, you know, why am I so upset about this? Because I, at least I still have a home to go to. I know that I have a bed I can sleep in that night. I know that my family will have food for me and will be there for me to support me. And because- So many thoughts and emotions going through my heart right now. I have seen the homeless in a different way this week and will never be the same. I have walked with them, talked with them, laughed with them, and I have even been threatened by one of them. That's okay. I wouldn't want someone walking through my living space either. I have seen what a real day in the life of our street friends looks like and will never be the same. I am trying to meet them right where they are. I am not here to be the savior, but to be a friend. I am here to meet them right where they are and especially let them feel that I genuinely want to get to know them and not just the them that the world says they are. Good morning, York College, and welcome to our daily chapel chat. I think it goes without saying that York College is a special place. And what makes it special is you, our students. You guys are York College. You guys are campus ministries. You guys are the arts. You guys are song fest. And for a lot of you guys, you are Panther Athletics. Now it's time, York College, to be the light. Now it's time to persevere in the face of adversity. Now is the time to be, as our track and cross country teams say, Kia Kaha, forever strong. Your college, our God is bigger. We are going to get through this together. Now it's up to you. Go. Go do. Go be. We love you guys. My God is a way maker. Good morning, YC, from all over the world. Whether it's morning, noon, or night, Wherever you're watching this, know that you are loved and you are missed on this campus. I'm humbled and honored to be able to give you a chapel moment this morning. And my God directed a stone from David into the dome piece of Goliath. That's the God that I serve. Delay does not mean denial. Whatever's being delayed right now in your life doesn't mean it has to be denied. Adapt. You're going to have to adapt right now. What can you learn in this moment that you weren't capable of learning before? Allow God to show up in your life and help you overcome. My God is a way maker, even in times like this. Embrace it. Adapt. Overcome. And know that in this moment, that in this part of your legacy, you allowed God to show up in your life.
All right. Hey, YC, how's it going? My name is Christian. Um, I'm a senior, so shout out to the class of 2020. Uh, this has been a rough year for us, uh, just not being able to be with you guys. So I want to encourage you guys um, as we go through and as we navigate this new normal, that we remember that even though we can't see the road ahead of us, we know that God's in control of it. Um, and I just want to encourage all you underclassmen to take advantage of YC. Don't for one moment take it for granted. I just want to close out by giving a shout out to my class of 2020. I love you guys. Um, this is not easy for me. If I get an emotional, I'm sorry for that. But just to be able to be on this campus uh, one last time. Love y'all. Hey, welcome to the York College Chapel Talk for Tuesday, March 31st. We're out here in the 60s. It's looking good, but we got winter coming, according to Sam, later this week because it changes around here. I'm coming to you outside of McGehee in my favorite tree right here to talk about change today. This mammoth beast here has seen a lot of change on this campus and it's seen another change because as I just glance around, I don't see any of my students out here. I don't see students period out here because you're all at home working online and it's been a difficult change. And I believe in a risen savior, one who loves us all. And so as we all go through this transaction, it is difficult. This change is difficult, but you know what? It's gonna pass. And tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow brings with it new change. This campus is blooming. It will change tomorrow. It will be more colorful tomorrow. Our lives have an opportunity to become more colorful tomorrow. And that depends on you and it depends on me. And that relationship with Jesus makes it easier. So I hope in this change, in this uh, situation that we find ourselves in, you look to Jesus who's in charge, who's in control, and helps us through all changes if we allow it. Love you guys. We miss you. We say that all the time, but it is actually really true. We miss you guys and we love you. God bless. Hey YC, I've been hearing a lot of things from different students, different faculty staff members. Some of us are really loving this transition to online, others not so much. One of the main things though that I keep hearing is how much people really miss their community here. Whether you are somebody who has traveled far away from us or you have stayed here on campus, things are not the same. I really want to encourage you to keep in mind that our community here at YC is not about the location, it's not about the buildings, it's not about the campus that we have here in York, it's about the people that we hold near and dear to us. You're a valuable part of our community. Hopefully we can use this time to really intentionally engage with one another. Maybe this is something that we can use to be intentional about building the strength of our community that we have here so that when all of this is over and everybody is back here with us, that our community will be stronger because of it. God bless. Good morning. Normally we would all be together at our Panther Days Chapel, but unfortunately we are not. Um, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to speak to everyone today, even though it's not in our normal setting. Um, through the last four years of being here on campus, a lot of things have changed. We're facing a lot of changes right now, but I think that's one of the beautiful things about being a part of the story of God and writing our stories for ourselves along the way. One of the most important things that I've learned here during my time at York College is that the decisions that we make of what will write our story are the most important decisions that we will make in our entire life. God has chosen each and every one of us and he's given us the opportunity to make those choices along the way to write our story. However, there's a lot of things in life that get pretty messy. And most of the time life, in fact, is messy. We have our weaknesses, but sometimes through those moments is when we can truly experience God's love. We have the choice every single day I don't know all the answers to life's puzzling questions by any means, but I do know that if we choose God intentionally every single day, we're going to be taking steps in the right direction. Hey, I'm Victoria. And I'm Karis. And today we wanted to answer the question, why are emotions important? So one thing we've noticed a lot is a lot of our friends are experiencing a lot of emotion during all this time of transition and change, but they don't really want to address it. So I think it's a common misconception that we have that we aren't in control of our emotions at all. And while we might not be in control of our reaction that we have, we actually are in control of our response. We, when we're feeling sad or angry, we can't just change it, but we can control how we respond to it. 
As an anonymous poet put it, he says, so pull out your sword, your response, and thank God for his arrival. Trust he is with you. You can't lose to an emotion when you have the blood of the lamb on your side. Emotions are welcome, but don't let them get the best of you. Good morning from your college campus. To all of you wonderful YC students out there and the alumni who are viewing, today we want you to know deep in your inner core two truths. The first one, our God is faithful and he is walking with you. You are not alone. The second, YC administration, faculty and staff are keeping you close in our thoughts and prayers. You are not alone. We're in this together, and together we will be YC strong because our strength is not in ourselves. It comes from our God who is holding us each step of the way, every day. I'll see you in the fall, and if not, know that you're here with me, and we're in this together. Good morning, Good York College, and welcome to today's chapel moment. This past year, I've had the honor and privilege of helping lead the Sunday morning college Bible class at church. Most recently, we have been looking at what the scriptures say about love. We were able to talk about God's love for us and the love that we are to have for God. And we were just beginning to consider what the Bible says about the love we are to have for each other when our time together was suspended. We were just about to start dissecting and discussing the description of love found in 1 Corinthians 13. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In this time of crisis, don't let social distancing become social isolation. Check on your neighbors, check on your family, check on your friends. Be patient, be kind. Use this time as an opportunity to show God's love. The final verse of 1 Corinthians 13 sums up how important love is when it says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Your college, friends, and family around the world, let's be sure we're showing God's love. Hello, my name is Dickie Hill. I'm coming to you from Abilene, Texas. I appreciate being able to share the next three minutes with you. As an alumnus of your college, I have many fond memories. This trying time of the coronavirus has forced all of us to move from our comfort zones. The good part is that God moves with us. As we know from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, God is the God of all comfort. It concludes by stating, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves received from God. Stressful times bring opportunities to serve. We hope each family member will find ways to do this through comforting others. Comfort with the love of the Lord. Encourage others who might be less positive in their thoughts about the future. We will come out on the other side of this crisis with a stronger faith in the God of our salvation, and God will be glorified. May God bless the York College family as we live our lives for Him. Thank you. Good morning, York College. Welcome to our York College Chapel moment. Some of you don't know me, so I'm going to introduce myself to begin with. Uh, my name is Curly Cox, and I am the assistant softball coach here at YC, and I also teach a few classes in education. The girls on the softball team call me Coach Curly. Is that you have to be willing to take a risk. You have to take a risk every day you walk in a classroom. It's usually something you don't know, and the teacher or the professor is trying to teach you new things. In sports, you have to be willing to go out and you have to be able to put yourself on the line every day. I found that when we come up against difficult things, those are the times that we need to take a risk. We need to take a risk for Jesus. We need to take a risk for our profession and our academics. And uh, so I pray I that in your journey, as you sit at home doing your classes and being with your parents or whatever it is you're doing, staying in the house, not getting to go out, 
I pray that every day you show up, that you show up and you don't just sit in the bleachers, but you show up, you show up to your classes, you show up to being a family member, uh, that you uh, give your very best, you do everything that you need to do uh, to make yourself or help yourself be successful. And last of all, don't be afraid to take risks. Make sure that they're good risks for what you're trying to accomplish, but don't be afraid uh, to take risks. And most of all, don't be afraid to take a risk for Jesus. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Hello, York College. Donald so what are you doing with your life? Now, right now you're probably thinking, oh, I'm just staying home, waiting for the crisis to pass, just wasting time. But every crisis brings an opportunity. You see, we like to establish our little routines and we go through our life day by day, just following the routine, seeing what's next on the schedule. It's when crisis enters our lives and shakes things up, shakes up our routines and makes us take a look at what we're doing and why. So make the most of this time. Catherine and I spoke to the choir a while back and I said, you're going to remember this semester the rest of your lives. You will tell your grandchildren about it. So make the most of it. You don't want your grandkids to be asking you, so grandma, grandpa, tell us what you did in the great corona crisis of 2020. And you respond, I played a lot of video games, binged a lot of Netflix. Have you heard of the Tiger King? No. Take this opportunity to do something worthwhile, something meaningful. Write some letters, I mean real letters, with an envelope and a stamp to people that you love. Read some great literature that you've always wanted to read but never taken the time to get into. And of course, focus on your spiritual life. Spend some day, time each day in focused silence before God. Read scripture. But instead of reading it to pass a test or complete an assignment or to check off your daily to-do list, really spend time pondering its message and letting it fill your heart. Each day is a gift from God. Don't let a single one go to waste. I look forward to seeing you in the fall and hearing what you've done with this time. Good morning, YC. On behalf of YC Alumni Love, we miss you and we're sorry for this time when we can't show up and help remind you how much you're cared about. I, for one, was looking forward to Waffle Day and those fine quality waffles we're going to have together. But this morning, I want to give you a little peek behind the curtain and share the formula for YC Alumni Love. Because for one, it's not a secret. And two, there's a greater purpose for it. If the execution hasn't been made clear, we want to remind you on a regular monthly type basis that you are cared about. Sometimes the gifts are fun, sometimes practical, but the spirit of it all was that you would recognize that there were YC alum who cared a great deal about you, even though you never met. But the truth is, Christians do have an incredible opportunity to influence others. Through faithful Christian living and through generosity and through kindness, we literally can assist people in drawing nearer to God. And as a student, I was so influenced by godly, faithful people on campus, I couldn't not recognize God and be thankful to Him. So my hope is this, it's that students will continue to allow themselves to be influenced and transformed by the truth of the gospel. And secondly, it's that as Christians, we recognize the incredible opportunity we have to influence others for Christ, and we take that obligation seriously. And I trust that the way we live can and will draw others to God. Good morning, York College. It's a beautiful morning on the York College campus but it's not nearly as good a morning as it would be if all of you were here. We miss you so much, and I know this has been difficult for many of us and for many of you. I want to say thank you for the ways that you've all adjusted and been flexible as we continue to work out some of the glitches that we've had with Canvas and with our online classes. Just keep doing it. I'm very happy this morning to be able to be here and to share just a, a chapel moment with you. I would like us to rethink and reframe COVID-19. COVID-19 stands for coronavirus and all of those things, but I want us to think about it in other ways, and that is the C-O-V-I-D. I think it should stand for confidence of victory in difficulties. We are going to continue to work through these things. We're going to continue to work hard, and we're going to do all we can to make this a very successful semester. I appreciate all you're already doing for all uh, in that regard. And I've got to say this too, that when I think of these difficulties we're going through, I think I'm reminded and encouraged of the words of Peter when he talks about a living hope that we have in Jesus because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that living hope begins today. It doesn't begin after we die, it begins now. We can overcome this, we can be victorious, and we're gonna have a great semester. I miss you all, I love you. 
Can't wait for all of us to be back together again in August. God bless you, and God bless York College. Wait, is that, is that thing still on? Off. Welcome to the last chapel of the year. It usually doesn't happen this way, and, and it's really kind of sad for us because you're not here. And campus is so much different without students here. We miss every one of you. Uh, we love you. We had no idea what a difference it would be. It seems in some ways like summer vacation already, but at the same time, uh, we aren't able to share any of the events that, uh, that we usually share this time of year. I want to make a few comments, but first of all, I want to start out by congratulating uh, Hannah Anderson and Carter Price on being Ms. and Mr. Uh, YC. Hannah has a special place in my heart because I actually baptized her mother when I was a student here at York College and her mother was in high school. So I've uh, been in contact with that family through a lot of years. It was pretty exciting to me to see Hannah come here, first of all, and then see the growth that's happened with her. Uh, Carter, of course, uh, we're just so proud of him and all his accomplishments. Uh, both in athletics, academically, and also for uh, keeping Ignite Excellence going. So congratulations to both those people. And I wish we could have done something in front of all of you to where they could have received the kind of uh, recognition that, that they deserve. As I've been thinking about what, uh, what we've been going through this, this semester, uh, I've had lots of thoughts, as all of us have. Uh, a couple of them that I want to share with you. First of all, I. I, I've lived a long life, and it's been a, a very positive life, and God has really blessed me in a lot of ways. But I've had a lot of things go wrong. Uh, I know what it is to be injured. I know what it is to be in car wrecks. I know what it is to have financial setbacks. I know what it is to have marital problems. I know what it is to lose uh, close friends or to have uh, problems with employees or, or coworkers that kind of mess you up and, and make you feel bad and make you go through some, some real down times. But the good thing about uh, living as long as I have and having that kind of experience is the fact that I can always see the end. I can come through it and see where God has blessed me. You know, you can never see God in the moment, but you can also always look back and see His footprints in everything that you've done in every place you've been and see how those footprints have supported you and guided you. And so we aren't destined by our experience, but we are shaped by them. And I just want to encourage you through this, uh, this event that you're going through. It will be a memorable experience the rest of your life. It will be something you always think about, it will be something you tell your kids and your grandkids. Uh, it, it will be something that has always impact your life from this point onward. But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily have to shape you. It doesn't have to define you. And I think about that a lot because I think one of the great things that, that come from being in a relationship with God for so long is that you can always see Him at the end of the road. I always know that no matter what happens to me, that eventually it's gonna be okay because God is always there. He's always a part of my life. He always gives me direction. And if I spend more and more time with Him, listening to Him and listening to His will and reading His Word, I find out that, that there are things in this life that, that want to defeat me, but they won't because of that relationship. I want to encourage you as you go through this and as you go onward. I've, I've been concerned about this society that we're in because we can't seem to, to have any silence in our life. Uh, when I see you walking around campus with earbuds in, uh, when I see people driving down the road with, with earbuds or the radio turned up, I realize that what we have done is we've replaced quiet reflection and thinking about God with noise. And sometimes that noise is needed. Sometimes we need that distraction. But many times I wish we would just take the noise out of our lives and we'd be quiet and we talk to God and listen for His voice. I hope that during this time that you have so much time on your hands because you can't go to movies, you can't go out and do anything, you can't, you can't meet with friends, that you will find some time, first of all, to be quiet and just think about the relationship with God and what it means. And that you'd also take time to get into His Word. 
and that you would use his word to help guide you through what's coming up next. You can use this time of your life to, become out, to come out a better person, one that is more dedicated, one that is firmer in your belief, and if, maybe if you don't have a belief that you can find one. I really hope that and pray that for you as you go forward. You know, Jesus said in, in Matthew, he said, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. It seems like a lot of times we're looking for rest, we're looking for uh, peace, we're looking for it in so many different places. But the real answer is in God. And I hope, I hope that that comes out of this time that you have by yourself right now. But also as we end the semester, uh, it's always my concern that you think about your future. You think about what you're going to do and where you're going to go and who you're going to be with and all those things are important decisions. I miss sitting and talking with you. I got a, a note today from one of our students who said, I miss the fact that we haven't been able to sit in the cafeteria and have lunch together because she said, I'll never be able to do that again. She's graduating. And that kind of hit me strong because there are some of you who I will never see again. And, and that's, that's saddening because we've built a life together, we've built a community together, and, and those things will never, never go away. They will always be part of who I am and who you are and who we are as, as a body. Finally, as I always say at the last chapel of every year, that I hope that you are blessed as you go forward. And the priestly blessing from Numbers chapter six, may the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. God bless you all. And so I thought there was no better way for us to join in the prayer chapel on this Friday than to hear from the York College Concert Choir under the direct direction of Dr. Clark Rausch performing There Is a River. <laughs>